One week later, what a difference a week makes. This is just beautiful. It is just bluebells as far as the eye can see in this beautiful ancient woodland. Now, bluebells, for those of you who don't know, are a flower that here that grow in the UK and other parts of the world, to be fair. But in the UK, um, between sort of late or April and early May, we just get an absolute carpet, if the conditions are right, a carpet of bluebells in these ancient woodlands and across the UK. And they're just absolutely beautiful. Now, I'm in Mitchell Diva. I've been here many, many times before and different years, depending on the weather and all that and how the winter's been, will very much depend on how the flowers turn out. But this year, my God, they're beautiful. So I cannot wait to get into this forest and see what we can get. Now today, I brought all colour with me today. Um, obviously, I've got my digital camera with me because I'm filming it, um, this right now. On that, I've got my um, 4x5 with 6x17 back. I've got no colour 4x5, unfortunately. It seems to be sold out everywhere, uh, which is a bit annoying. But what I have got is um, I've got my 6x17 back with two rolls of X-Chrome, um, E6 and I've got one roll of Portra 400 so I'm going to go with the Portra 400 first and then I'm going to move on to the uh, Edge Crow which is expired um, but I'm feeling that the drum uh, the dynamic range in this scene today uh, especially with the overclass guys really bringing the colour out in these um, these beautiful bluebells uh, that is going to suit that film um, because there's not much dynamic range to work with um, or is going to become an issue for that film. So that's what we're going to shoot. I'm going to get on. Uh, last week I did do a bit of scouting in here, so I've got a couple of locations I'm going to go and visit now. And I'm going to get on in there and see what I can get. So yeah, without further ado, get on with the shooting. Right, we're all set up and I'm just about to take the first shot. Like I said, I've got X Chrome 100 in here, which is an E6 film. Um, it's going to be a bit difficult for me to develop later on, but anyway, I'm going to take this in X Chrome. I've not used it in a while. Um, it is expired, but it's only expired by a year um, or just over. So I'm not going to make any adjustments to my uh, settings when I shoot this. If um, uh, they always say it's a stop a decade, um, and obviously because it's so close to being. Um, expired then I'm gonna have to trust that it has been refrigerated or um, put in a freezer and that everything is fine with it so I'm gonna go with that um, I did um and ah about changing it and going with my um, Porsche 400 but I thought no I'm gonna stick with X Chrome so anyway without further ado let's get this shot taken so like I say I'm at f8 I'm at um, eight for a second Here we go. I've tested the shutter. Don't need to uh, block the lens because there is no light today. That's it, that is the first shot taken. So I'm gonna put that back in there now. And I'm gonna wind on and I'm gonna take a second shot just in case there's an issue with the, with the first one. Okay, so let's get on and take the second one. Now there is a bit of wind about um, at the moment, so because obviously this is an ISO 100 film, um, it's got a slower shutter speed if I'm looking to, um, well obviously I have got the, the uh, aperture open, uh, so I'm shooting f8 uh, for a second like I said, so there's going to be some movement in these leaves if I'm not too careful, so I'm just going to wait a second for the uh, wind to die down before I take this second shot. There we go. Second shot taken. Oh, I say that. I didn't even take the dark side out. There you go, look. So not second shot taken. Right, let's try that again. Let's call that a practice. There we go then. That's it. Now the second shot's taken. So we're just going to slide that back in there. Take that out. And we're going to move on to the next place which because i'd uh, when i come and scouted this the other day i hadn't identified this as being a um a location that i wanted to um stop and shoot so i think i've just missed the frame there as well unfortunately i have never mind um but there is 
further in the wood um, I did identify some uh, some different compositions so I'm going to go and check them out um, obviously the further I get into the wood the more these bluebells aren't out um, around the outskirts of the wood they're a lot more out and they're a lot more vibrant but the more you go into the wood obviously the light hasn't got to them the same so they're not quite as vibrant as they are sort of on the outskirts like I am now but anyway I'm going to go and check them out and uh, hopefully they're they're um, they're looking good to shoot so let's get on and do that so I've got a nice scene set up here. Uh, what caught my eye in this scene here is this, this sort of dead branch that's sort of fallen off from above, probably from this dead tree or deadish tree that's sort of here on this side. Um, and I really like this sort of, just the way this is in the landscape, the way it's sort of fallen and landed, um, obviously before the bluebells are here. And the bluebells are sort of just popped up around it. As you could probably see, I'm hoping you can see from the camera, that again the carpet just goes on for miles and miles and miles we've got this nice sort of new uh, tree that's growing there with a the nice green leaves um, and the, just the contrast between them green leaves um, and the blue sort of purple of the, the flowers is just beautiful so again we're going to go for something similar um, I've got my 250 more lens on as, uh, as well I just sort of walked around the entirety of this area here trying not to sort of step on all the flowers and step in between them and stuff be as delicate as I can uh, so I can leave it for others to enjoy as well uh, don't need me trampling over everything but anyway so yeah I've been as delicate as I can just stepping in and, and, in and amongst the flowers but um, so I, I've just sort of wandered around with the viewfinder app and I've just had a look at some compositions and like I say I've sort of settled on this one here with this lovely branch um, there's a couple of things that I perhaps don't like about it um, I've gone at it from different angles and I think that this is the nice, uh, nicest of the bunch um, and it is in my mind nice enough to take so the issue that I'm having with it is I don't know if you can uh, see it on the camera but there is a tree like a, a young sapling here and behind it is that dead tree where this branch has fallen off and unfortunately the two are right right uh, in front of each other so uh, there's no separation there between those uh, that sort of tree and, and the one behind it that isn't the main subject so it's not worrying me too much it's just a little bit of a niggle that I'm always going to look at and go I know that's there and I wish it wasn't but it is and I'm just gonna have to put up with that the other thing is on this sort of dead branch has fallen off there's a little twig that sort of sticks up and it sticks up into the green canopy of that new tree which is behind it so that's a little bit frustrating as well um, so I might I might remove that in post I don't know yet or I might just leave it as it is but as it stands at the moment it's just a little bit of a frustration just that tree and that twig so I've metered the scene um, again we're not playing with a massive amount of dynamic range in my mind the most important thing when you're shooting this sort of thing in woodland like this where you've got you know this carpet of bluebells and you're trying to make them pop and stand out and all the rest of it is really about getting in tight and not looking at the whole picture because the whole picture is messy we need to do is look in at these little intricate scenes like this one here and go in tight and make sure that you're not getting the sky in because the sky like i say will just boost your uh, dynamic range massively where you've got this bright sky and then you're in the woodland as well what you're looking for is for this to sort of pop if you've got sunlight coming in and through the canopy and you've got a ray of light coming in that would be beautiful but obviously i haven't got that in them conditions today i've got a slightly overcast day with some sunny spells um obviously no sun out at the moment but just when you're looking at this sort of thing i find getting low and just making sure that like i said the sky's not in and you're just cutting out as much as you can just to focus in on a little intricate scene like this with this branch and this sort of tree in the background and the blue going off into the distance so that's what we're aiming for so like i said i've metered um, I'm going to go with uh, f8 and that's giving me 11th of a second so I just want to uh, sorry f11 sorry eighth of a second let's get that the right way around before we start so I've got that dialed in at the moment just going to take a uh, test shot so if I make sure that the aperture blade is closed just take a test shot that's all working fine cock the shutter again just get rid of that second take the dark side out make sure that everything is still and let's go for the shot and that's it so because I'm an idiot what I've done is I've missed a frame when I've rolled um, when I've rolled this film on with this so what I've actually now taken is three shots and not four unfortunately 
but no bother um, I'm just going to wind this on now so it's out I'm going to change over to Portra 400 and I'm just going to change obviously the settings on my light meter and then I'm going to shoot a couple of um, couple of shots here with uh, with Portra before moving on and seeing what else we can find so yeah just going to get on now and uh, change the film over and I'll see you in a minute right so meter in this scene um, the sun's playing with me a bit at the moment because it just come out a second ago and it's probably going to come out again um, so I've just metered around the scene um, well it was a little bit brighter because I've got Portra in there now it's not so much of an issue um, if it changes slightly because uh, I've definitely got a lot more dynamic range in this film than anything else again I'm only dealing with a couple of stops so if it changes slightly it's not going to be a big issue um, so what I've done is obviously I've changed my meter set into ISO 400 and uh, F sort of F eight and two thirds it gives me 60th of a second so i'm going to shoot one shot at f8 and two thirds 60 of a second i'm going to shoot the next one at f11 and two thirds which gives me 30 of a second so i'm going to try them two just to see see what sort of um you know what sort of uh, how much blurred background i get with both of those settings and uh, see what the difference is really so right let's get on i've um i've already inputted the uh the settings i've cut the shutter the blades are closed everything's happy i'll make sure that this time i pull the dark slide out right here we go so that's it the first shot taken i'll just put that back in and then we'll roll on to frame three without jumping over it this time sounds a bit like a seagull when i uh wind this on right frame three there we go right let's change the settings so let's change that to f11 and two thirds 30 for a second do a bit of a test shot all working fine cut the shutter take the dark side out make sure that dark slide goes back in that's it that's it for this scene i'll just roll on to five again without missing it because i think five is the one i missed last time there we go right that's sort of another couple of shots in the bag so what i'm going to do now is see what else i can find in the forest to shoot um there's loads here like i say it goes on for miles i'm just trying to pick out them in, in uh, intricate scenes in amongst this is quite difficult but um, and it's changed so much since a week ago there's a lot more greenery on the trees now there's a lot more canopy here um, so yeah so I'm just gonna have a wander around to see what else I can find and then I'll see you again once I'm set up for the next one right I'm all lined up here for the next shot and I'm just absolutely loving today it's, I mean, it is just amazing and it's so peaceful apart from me shouting at my camera and uh, getting way too overexcited because of all this beauty but aside from that it is just it's peaceful I was, there was a runner come through here earlier there was someone walking on their own just wandering through but i've seen deer i can hear all the wildlife and uh, i mean no doubt they've run a mile now because i'm here but it's just so peaceful and i could literally come here day after day after day to uh, until these bluebells are gone because uh, it's just so beautiful and it is quite rare that you sort of see this I suppose like I say different years do you heal yield different levels in uh, in growth in these uh, bluebells uh, but today looks quite or um, well, this year looks quite a good year for them so anyway talk for the shot I'm looking at now so what I've gone for is I quite like this tree this again this sort of new tree and what I've had to do is to um, again I don't know how well you can see it on on the camera but the two bigger trees either side and then there's sort of a, a path through uh, I say a path through it's just some trees that are sort of dotted about and what I'm trying to do is obviously place this new tree in between the other two as evenly as I can otherwise it's going to my OCD will kick in or just uh, do me head in um, but at the same time I don't want it to just look like a mass of trees behind this tree um, so it's quite difficult just to 
uh, get the right composition here to make sure there's enough separation between this new tree and what's going on behind it. Again, I'm just going to look for a soft um, background as it just disappears off out because I'm not interested in what goes on behind that. All I want to do is give a sense of that colour that is in all the blue behind and obviously this green, this lush green leaves that are just dotted about in the distance as well. Um, I have walked all around this area again, there's a lot of sort of fallen trees and bits and pieces like that. Couldn't quite find one I liked um, and there's also some quite large sort of areas of brambles, uh, low-lying brambles and they obviously break up the, the blue or the bluey purple colour. So I'm trying to avoid them as well because it is quite, I, I'm not quite enjoying that sort of breakage in in the blue so i'm looking for something that is just mainly blue as far as the eye can see which i've pretty much got here i can see some brambles right in the far distance but i don't think they're going to affect the shot because like i say i'm going for a soft background so i'm going to shoot some around the f8 again um, and make sure that this is razor sharp this uh, tree in the foreground that everything else can fall off behind it so that's what i'm looking at so i'm just going to uh, open that up Set it on f6.3, just so I'm letting in as much light as possible to see on the ground glass. And then what I'll do is I'll close it down to f8 and just see what that looks like uh, focus wise. And uh, yeah, I'm going to get on and focus this in now and then we'll do a meter reading and then we'll get on and take this shot with the last two uh, frames of portrait. Right, so I've just uh, focused that in and looking just through that ground glass and taking away all the distractions from around it, just looking through that. Is in my view, and maybe I'm quite sad, but it's one of the best views ever. Just looking through that, cutting out everything else, and just seeing like the, the soft background and everything. Oh, it just looks absolutely, absolutely amazing. I'm really hoping that the shots, or the couple of shots I take now, and I'd probably take a couple on uh, my last roll of X-Chrome, um, I'm really hoping that they turn out as good as that looks in the back of there because that looks absolutely beautiful so right let's get on and um and meet this scene so i've got to make sure because uh, i did shoot a couple of black and white over there i'm not going to lie i just didn't film it i'll put them up now anyway you can see while i'm uh, while i'm metering this uh black and white in my mind is probably not the right choice for here but that, that uh, scene i took a minute ago with the with the tree on the floor the branch uh just looked like it was crying out for some black and white so i just took a couple of shots right so let's um let's meet this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put the tree in the background because it's a bigger tree it's easier to get get the uh the, the circle in all of that um i'm going to put him he's f uh let's put him i want him to be sort of somewhere around mid gray probably slightly darker the mid gray let's see what the bluebells are 10 and two thirds the greenery is 10 and two thirds yeah okay dealing with two stops of dynamic range there so nice and easy right so if i do that i'm looking on here when i just sort of close the aperture down just to um just refine that focus a little bit um i've ended up with f8 and one third and on here f8 and one third is 60th of a second f8 and one third 60th of a second there's yeah, got to make sure i'm right with that so i'm not going to see now right so let's close the after blaze down always got to remember to do that otherwise it really got a habit of spoiling the day let's change that to 60th of a second and then let's look at make sure that's right which it is have a bit of a test fire yep that's all working fine right i shall get the um i'll get the film holder on the back now and uh we'll take the shot okay that's all good shutters cocked blades are closed let's take the dark slide out let's get this shot taken Beautiful, first shot in the bag. It's as easy as that, he says, having uh, taken 45 minutes to find this shot. Well, I know I've said this a hundred times before, but I'm gonna say it a hundred times again, but I just love um, the slowness of large format photography. It is what has really kick-started my love of photography again after so many years. And I'm just gonna take this quick because there is some dappled light now in here. That is beautiful. So I don't know whether the camera's picking it up, but there's some rays of sunshine now that's just dappling the 
in amongst the trees and that's just really made things pop a lot more now so right i'm going to get that back in there take that off as gently as i can and now what i'm going to put some extra chrome in here and we'll try some we'll try some slide film and see what we can get with that right i've just quickly changed over the slide film i'm gonna to have to take this shot now because as you can probably see the light is just in here now and it's absolutely beautiful so i've just taken a shot um i'm probably going to burn through my roll here i should imagine but as you can see the light has just come out now um and it's just beautiful so i've just had to re-meet around the scene obviously i'm dealing with a slide film here so um, or a colour positive film as opposed to a negative film where, and the dynamic range is generally about six stops instead of the eight stops you get with a negative you probably push a negative a bit more than eight stops but I work within eight stops and on um, on slow film or colour positive film I work with um, I work with a, a narrower uh, depth of field so as you can see just the light um, coming in here so I just want to make sure that it's still okay and i haven't blown the highlights out again there's not a huge amount of dynamic range in here um sort of the lighter areas are giving me an ev of about 12. the tree trunk without any light on it is about an ev of 11 so i'm putting that at about what they've called mid gray and sort of the darker areas of the the forest floor here or the wood floor is f11 and a third so really i'm not playing with a lot a great deal of um, dynamic range at all here which is good for color positive film so i'm going to recheck that i'm going to just open it up a little bit more and go with f11 this time i shot at f8 before a 30th of a second now i'm going to go to f11 at 15th of a second cut the shutter just double check that like i say it's not very forgiving at all of mistakes and I wouldn't recommend starting on this film unless you don't mind a lot of pain and misery but there is definitely something about getting a large negative or say negative when you get a large um, developed roll back or sheet film back of colour positive film and when you look at it uh, just as it is it's just so beautiful to see that so um, yeah I definitely uh, really enjoy shooting it it's just one it's expensive and secondly it is not very forgiving at all and if you're in a high dynamic range situation you'll end up having to bracket images which I've never had much success with because I find lining it up is very difficult um, and also it's very expensive to bracket images as well especially if you're going to bracket four times or you're going to bracket three times so I tend to stay away for it for um, um, high dynamic range scenes because it is just difficult um, to be honest let's roll on to five and as I'm staying here I'll just wait a little bit just to see what the sun does now now I know now I know it's about I'll just wait to see what happens with it so uh, yeah it's just gonna be a bit of a waiting game now really but as you can see it's just wouldn't want to be anywhere else right now I'm gonna be honest just beautiful okay so we're back in again now sun's just popped out again as hopefully you can see on the camera so again I've gone with the same settings that's chrome still uh, this is f whoa, what is this f11 15th of a second and that's just beautiful <laughs> I just I know I keep saying it and I do sound like a stuck record and I know people have commented saying there's a lot of waffle there is but sometimes I just get a bit carried away in this sort of scene so I can't really apologize for that because uh, got to be passionate about what you do at the end of the day haven't you right let's get this last shot taken let's see if it wait to see if this light gets a little bit stronger I can see the sun above me is just um just coming out now just don't want to lose it behind the cloud again okay so finally we've got the uh the sun coming out 
so we can get on and take this last shot now so hopefully you can see the dappled light on the scene it's been about half an hour i've got to be honest just been sat on a log behind so going for instagram and uh answering uh well answering some of you guys um uh your messages on youtube so um anyway i'm going to get on and take this shot and stop waffling Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. I definitely enjoyed myself being out here today. I mean, look at this beautiful light now I've got. Now I've finished all my film, all the light comes out, which is about right. But anyway, don't matter. I think that this uh, this woodland today um, has been just as good under um, like a cloudy sky, where it just makes just makes the in my mind anyway, it makes the purple in uh, in the flowers sort of pop a bit more. So um, yeah, even the lights out now doesn't matter. I've taken some shots of my uh, Lumix, which I'll put some up as well. Just mix them in amongst the other shots I've taken today. But anyway, I hope you have enjoyed the video. If you have, please uh, leave a like because that is um, just helps me out massively. And a subscription to the channel would be amazing. And anyway. Hope you enjoyed this one. I will see you guys in the next one. And from here, I'll see you again.